Joy in the city. Joy in your life. Joy in your family. And joy everywhere in Jesus' name. GCK Authority has announced the next level move. From the land of honor and integrity comes two in one GCK live in Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria, the Global Crusade and Retreat, December 22 to 27, 2022. A new level of Impact Academy for youth, young adults and professionals. Titled Recharge to Excel, December 27, 2022, at 0600 hours GMT. All broadcasts live on satellite, radio, television, and all our social media platforms with Jonathan White, our guest music minister. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Thank you very much. Everybody praise the Lord. We'll be doing a lot of that during this week, and you'll get used to it. It's going to be a wonderful time together. And uh, I encourage you that all these six days you are here with us, because something good is going to happen to you. And uh, I don't care whether you are Christian or whatever, you go to church, you don't go to church. Never mind about that. Just come together and let us have a nice, wonderful time together. And the Lord is going to bless every one of us. And um, during the sessions, I'll be here on time so that if you need my attention and we need to interact together, solve some problems together, personal problems and family problems, we'll see how to get rid of some of these uh, naughty problems in our lives. And we're going to now face the right direction and you are going to succeed in life. Yeah. Let's have a word of prayer together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much for this privilege that you've given us the chance to come before you so that we'll have the privilege of knowing how to say no, when to say no, and what to say no to, and how to act in a way that will be profitable to us, profitable to our families, and profitable to our campuses, and profitable to the nation. We're just praying that you turn us around and solve the problems in our lives that we will become ourselves problem solvers in Jesus' name. Bless every one of us together, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. For those of us in all the other campuses, here in Nigeria and the other campuses in West Africa, I want to welcome you formally. And I want to tell you that this is going to be a great occasion for you. And uh, for those of us in Ghana, I was in your country just uh, this uh, last week. And we had those wonderful times together, Thursday night and Friday night. If you were there, as our campus uh, leader was there, we had some wonderful, wonderful signs and miracles that took place. On Friday night, we almost could not stop taking those testimonies as the Lord rained his showers of blessings upon the people of Accra, Ghana. And if you are there on the campuses in Ghana and you are listening to us now, I welcome you. Something good is about to happen to you. And for those of us in Nigeria, West and North and South and Middle Belt, everywhere, why don't you just pay attention now for the next moments we are before us and just see how the power of the Lord will change your life. Everybody, can you say no? No. Say it well. No. I'm talking to you tonight on the power to say no and to act right. If you have a Bible there in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 33, God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. As I look at that verse, I know, yes, David wrote that. And then I begin to check up. Could I say that? If I didn't know David, if I have never been to church, and if you cannot describe me as a religious man, could I say, God is my strength, and God is my power? I just say yes, because God is a creator. He has given us life, and he gives us the power to stay 
alive. In him, the Bible says, we live and we move and we have our being. Actually, that quotation we find in the Bible is actually coming from one of the poets of those days. And it wasn't taken from a religious book. It wasn't taken from even a philosopher. It was taken from just a poet, a writer of those days. And Paul the Apostle, being a person who had been educated in the education system of that day, he quoted that, he lifted that up, just like you would lift up something today from Shakespeare. Or you lift up something today from an historian. And then he said, in him, referring to God, we live and we move and we have our being. Actually, what he means by that is that we owe our existence and power to stay alive. We owe that to God. But having a life worth living is more than mere existence. You know, there are people that just exist. They are there. They wake up in the morning and then they live throughout the day. They sleep at night and you look back the whole day and you cannot find anything tangible that you have done. And you are wondering if every day is like this day, there will be nothing written about me in history. I'll just pass through every day, every week, every month, every year with nothing to show for my being in existence. And that's why I come to you wanting to tell you that having a life or living a life that is worth living is more than mere existence to be our best. While we live, we need to have the power, number one, for our physical life. If I don't have power and strength for physical life, what could I do? How can I study? How can I make it in life? I need power to stay alive physically. I also need power for my moral life. And I need power for my spiritual life. And it's a balanced life that we need to discover in all these areas. Look at this. When you, de when you develop the physical life, and you neglect the moral and the spiritual life, what do you become? You become a brute. You have energy, muscles, you are strong, but nothing moral, nothing spiritual. All you have is brute strength, like an animal. And therefore, when you just develop, on the one hand, the physical life, and you are not developing the spiritual and the moral, you have just a brute. What if I develop my intellect, and I neglect the moral, then I become a monster. You've read about many people, intelligent people, strategic people, and they could plan and strategize. They developed the intellect, but they did not develop the moral side of their lives. And we just had monsters living in communities, and they destroyed a lot. What if you develop the spiritual life, and you neglect the social area of your life? That's where we get the fanatics. That means then, as you have the physical life and the moral life and the spiritual life, you develop everything in a balanced way. Then you live a life that is worth living. Proper growth, proper development will come from the ability or the power to say no. Look at this. When we talk about education, we become educated by exercising our power to say no to ignorance. All of us who are here tonight, and those on the various campuses, your presence on the campus is a declaration that we're saying no. Our fathers, our forefathers, many of them lived in the village, and they died in the village because they did not exercise the power to say no to ignorance. And if you want to have courage, how can you live in this world without courage? Courage is the power, the ability to say no, to fear. If you are going to maintain freedom, young people will want freedom. And freedom is great. Liberty. 
that nobody is hedging you in, pinning you down, and uh, edging your life in, and you cannot be who you want to be. You want freedom. You know what freedom is? It's the ability and the power to say no to slavery and to bondage. That means then, as you exist, if you want to live a life that is worth living, you must be saying no. That is the essence of life. You want to live a good life, that demands you are going to say no to mediocrity. When you want to live a life that you want to say, I'm proud of the way I live. I'm proud of my achievement. I've made something in life. I've turned a nobody, a non-entity into somebody. That means you exercised the power to say no to mediocrity. And if you want to possess a happy life, a healthy life, it means you want to keep that power to say no to bad habits and no to sickness constantly. Otherwise, how do you maintain a healthy life, a happy life? a joyful life, an enthusiastic life full of energy and strength. That means then the power to say no and to act right will give you the kind of life you have been dreaming about. But look at this. If you're going to be able to say no and be firm, and stand by that and live by that. There are some words I need to give to you. Number one is the word desire. Desire. How can you go through life? And then we ask you, what do you want to become in life? What are you going to do in life? What are you living for? Why are you on this campus? And my friends, sons and daughters over there on the other campuses, why are you on that campus? Why have you left home and you've left everything and here you are? Maybe you're a student, maybe you're a lecturer. Whatever you are, whoever you are, why are you there? There is a desire. There is something pushing you. There is something that is stirring you up. There is a picture in front of you. I want to become this. I want to become this. I want to become this. That means, number one, there's a desire in your life. Number two, you decide. You desire. You decide, I want a good life. I want a happy life. I'm dreaming about what I will become in the future. If you do not think about the future, if you are not thinking about tomorrow, you are going to waste this day. Because what you do today is what leads you to what you are going to become tomorrow. And it is your dream, your vision, your desire, your goal for the future that makes you to live the way you are living today. And it begins with a desire. And you, fo you follow that up with decide, a decision. Number three, dedicate. And isn't that what you are doing, although, although you don't understand? You said, during this time, I'm going to dedicate and devote this part of my life to study at this time. We're saying no to something. Every time you take a decision like you are here now, you could have been another place. But you said no to a lot of things for you to be here. I don't mean for you just to be here tonight, for this program, for you to be on the campus. And for you to say, at this time, I'm going to stay in this department, in this faculty, and I'm going to do something. You pushed a lot of things aside. You've said no to a lot of things because you are dedicating and devoting this time, this part of your life, to become something and prepare for the future. And then number four is demand demand we do that we do that because you are not you're not going to live in isolation and you cannot take care of everything that you need look at you as you're sitting down there somebody manufactured or somebody fabricated or made that chair you're sitting on you need other people and the clothes you are wearing somebody made that and the shoes you have on your feet somebody made that how did you get them because I didn't come to you to tell you, here is a chair, you are demanding, you are asking. And then, how can I have this, how can I have that? And you are going to do that through life. Because there's a desire, you want to be something. 
And you know that other people are going to help you to be what you ought to be. Therefore, you are demanding. The only problem is sometimes we're not demanding from God. We're not asking from God. We think we're too intelligent to ask God anything. And we cheat ourselves. But this time, things are going to change in your life. You're going to understand what it means to live. And what it means to live that life that is worth living. I started by telling you, you must have a desire. There must be a decision. And there must be a dedication and a demand. And number five is to determine. Determination. Determination. Now, that is why if you're going to say no to something, and you're going to say yes to another thing, and you're going to be who you ought to be, there must be determination. And then, number six, surprisingly, decree. You decree. You say, this one, this is like a decree. This is what I will be. And this is what I will do with the help of God. And I'm not going to allow any circumstance or any man, any woman, anywhere to turn me around. I must reach my goal. Number seven, discipline. Discipline. You need to discipline yourself, you know. And every one of us will have some kind of discipline. When you uh, sleep at night and then in the morning you have to wake up and go to the class so that you can have, uh, you know, your lectures, you have to have self-discipline. Otherwise, those who do not have discipline, you just roll over on the bed and cover up again and they have gone. They're dreaming again. But they're not dreaming of having first class. They're dreaming of another thing. Now, if you are going to make it in life, discipline and so all these things will come together and it will play a balanced role in your life to make you to be able to say no to something and say yes to another thing and then act right and there are three people i'm going to show you tonight and uh, we have a lot to share together during this period and uh, their names jabez joseph jesus Number one, Jabez. Number two, Joseph. Number three, Jesus. Number one, say no and reach your potential. Say no and reach your potential. Number two, say no and reign in life. Say no and reign in life. Number three, say no and rule forever. As we look at these personalities one by one, it's so very interesting as we look at the history of their lives. And the reason we have this history and the reason we're reading these about these people in particular is so that you can compare your life with each of them. When I tell you about Jabez, you say, ah, wait a minute. That, that looks like that man is not a stranger to me. What he has gone through, I have gone through. What he experienced, I've experienced. Looks like we're almost born in the same family. Look at the history of this man. And if this man could still reach his potential, there is hope for me. I come to tell you tonight, there is hope for you. Yes. Things are not going to remain negative. All the things you see today that looks like everything is upside down, as if I don't have any backbone. I'm like a jellyfish. They drive me here. They drive me there. What can I do? I'm helpless. Tonight, you'll get on your feet. And God will give you a backbone to stand right and to be able to say no. And you will act right in Jesus' name. Look at this. It's in First Chronicles. If you don't have a Bible there, don't worry yourself. I'll read it to you. In First Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles chapter 4, reading from verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. Saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from the evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. 
and God granted him that which he requested. Everybody say that with me. And God granted him that which he requested. Say it again. Say it like this now. God is granting me what I request. Something is going to change in your life. First of all, first of all, you change your language, then you change your life. You change your language, then you change your life. God is granting me that which I request. I'm going to have a happy life. I'm going to have a successful life. I am going to make a good grade out of this university. I will not be a mediocre. I will not be a dropout. I will have the power to say no to evil, and I will have the power to say yes to that which is good. I will make it. I will make it. You change your language, and then you change your life. Look at this, Jabez. Understand what we're talking about in the history, in the life of this young man, a man like you, a man like me. A lady like you, a lady like, you know, your friends, it says, you say no so that you can reach your potential. Here it is. When this Jabez started to live, he began to look at everything around him, and it bothered him. Why is it, mommy, I'm always the sick fellow in the family. Mommy, why is it I'm always the one that doesn't have enough among all the other children? Mommy, tell me, why is it I'm always having these bad dreams as if life is going to be miserable for me? And he became, number one now, dissatisfied with the present stage. And it's a wonderful day in your life. When you look around and you look within, and then you begin asking questions, and you, begin dis you become dissatisfied with your present stage. Is it your health? Is it your lifestyle? Is it your morals? Is it your association? Is it the, you know, your appearance? Is it the poverty that surrounds you? Is it the discouragement all around? Is it the idea as if you are a failure and there is no way to change? What is it that you're looking at yourself and there is that emptiness in your life? And there is that vacuum in your life? And it's like sorrow surrounds you. And you begin to ask questions from mommy and from daddy and from the people that know you. Why am I like this? Now, you see this Jabez, he began to realize sorrow all around me, suffering. Am I the only one? But then he could have gotten discouraged. He could have said, all right, if life is like this, there is no point living. Let me end it all and forget it all. But Jabez did not do like that, obviously, obviously. A young man like you, a young man like us, temptation could have come to him. If sorrow is there, suffering is there, sickness is there, calamity there, and there is no way out, why don't you end it up? But Jabez said no, number one. He said no to melancholy. You know, going around, frowning your face, and being gloomy, the whole world is on me, I am miserable, I don't know why I'm living like this. Even see, the name they gave me, it symbolizes sorrow. Why is it like this? Everything is sorrowful. He said, number one, no to melancholy. Number two, no to mischief. You know, a, a boy like that, he could have said, I am not happy. Why are they happy? I am not happy. Why should anybody be happy? I'm going to be mischievous. If life is dealing with me like this, I am going to deal with everybody else. But no, he said no, number one, to melancholy. Number two, he said no to mischief. Number three, he said, ah, look at me very well. Because I was born in sorrow, and because there are problems in my life, you think I'm not going to make it in life? Ah, keep on watching. Number three, I say no to mediocrity. And that is the challenge I come to give you today. Like that as you look at Jabez and you compare the life of Jews of Jabez with your life, you'll say, number one, 
no to melancholy i'm not going to go through life unhappy and without any joy without any life and without fire without zeal and enthusiasm and energy in my life i'm going to say no to melancholy i'm going to say no to mischief and i say no to mediocrity and you know he knew that all around him how do you describe this the mother said uh, the mother said jabez come here let me tell you your father may not tell you this but actually before you were born we were in this deep terrible problem and then you were conceived in this condition and when you were born in fact uh, i must tell you if you're going to make it in life it's between you and your god mommy cannot help you daddy cannot help you uncle cannot help you cousin can no relative will help you that's why this man said mom that's all you have to tell me are you telling me that it's only mystery i'm going to experience in life mommy said well you are my son. I don't know what to tell you, but look at, look at everything that surrounds us here in this family. It's mystery. And Jabez stood up, and he pulled himself up to his very height. He looked up to the God of heaven. He said, God, you and I, we will make it. Because one with God is a majority. I said one with God is a majority. After talking to God like that, he turned to mom. He said, mom, I say no to misery. Number four, no to misery. No misery in my life. I will not be miserable. I said you will not be miserable. Number five, you know, there are many ideas that will be coming now. Because, you see, there are people that will get concerned. Jabez will be looking at you. I will be looking at your condition. I just want to help you. I just want to, you know, give you an idea. You may try if you want. And I think it may help you. And Jabez said, I'm looking for help. What are you telling me? I'm telling you, you know, there is a, don't mind the word and don't mind my language. I'm just trying to help you, Jabez. What, just tell me, what is it? They call it mysticism. Ah, to be a mystic. What does that mean? It's a secret something. And it's a kind of oriental thing. If you do the meditation like this, you cross your leg like this, and then you don't put on any light, and your roommate goes out, and you are there all alone by yourself, and you get into this mystic trance and something. Maybe things will change. <laughs> Jabez said, you want to worsen my condition. Already things are bad, and you want to make them worse. Go your way. Don't come to me again. I say no to mysticism. And that's the challenge I'm bringing to you. They might try to bring that idea to you, or cultism, or secret cult, or whatever it is, and they say it will help you. Because look at your condition. If you are poor like this, and nobody is taking care of you, don't you know, don't you think that if you do this and do this, you'll be able to make it in life? After all, you know, those of us who are there, it's not just ordinary. It's because of what we are going through in life. And then we thought if we could branch off and go into mysticism, then we'll be all right. And Jabez said, that's not the way. That's not the way. I'll come and tell you my testimony when I get through, because I am going to get through. I said I am going to get through. And I don't care the problem on the way and the mountain I have to climb. I will get through. I say no to mysticism. Number six. I say no to money laundering. You know, somebody tells me and he says, you know now what you can do? Because if you just stay like that, and you think that, you know, heaven will just rain currency on you, hard currency on you, stay there. It's not like that. And uh, then Jabez is saying, what shall I do? You know, at that time, there was no computer, but now there's computer and internet. And then, you know, the advice is just go to the cyber cafe there and you type out a letter. Get some addresses. You, you know what you will do. There's some people out there. 
and you know they are in the west and america and europe and everywhere you type out a letter and then you put a particular address and a particular name and then you tell that fellow there's a great business here and if you will you know send this particular amount then you give another kind of uh, you know address and uh, you know account number and everything and the fellow over there will think that there's business here in nigeria we call it different different names uh, you know some people call it uh, what do they call it now ah you know about it too now that if you do this and do this then you can have whatever it is you need other people it is drug money that if you have this and you have that money money laundering if you do it in a bad way like that then you can put it in good business so that bad money put in good business will yield something for you and then jabez was saying if i do that and I made a bad case worse. What if I get into the hands of the law enforcement agents? Because they may not catch other people. It is poor man that doesn't have a you know, long leg appearance that they will catch. Ah, go your way. I say no to money laundering. You see, this man, Jabez, he was dissatisfied with his condition. But he knew saying yes to evil things will not be the answer, will not be the solution. Therefore, he said no. And then he acted right. That's why he began to pray. And thank God, his prayer yielded fruit. And tonight, you are going to pray. Even if you have never prayed in your life, you are going to pray tonight. And from this very night, your prayer is going to yield good fruit. God is going to bless you. And the Lord will turn your life around because you have come here. Because you have a desire in your heart. I said he had dissatisfaction with the present state. Number two, he had desire for a better state desire for a better state i can testify concerning any one of you you are here because there is something in your heart a desire for a better state and now because of that desire what did he do he prayed because we were told in that verse 10 and jabez called on the name of the god of israel jabez was that your first time of praying and Jabez said, well, that was really my first time. I tried many ways. I went to many places. I thought I could make it by myself. But when everything came to the bottom and to the lowest level, and I knew I must do something now, and there's nothing else I will do, I came to the very last bus stop. And I said, now god must get involved and he prayed to the god of israel you are at that point in your life that the almighty god that created you and he created you for a purpose and that purpose is almost getting ruined and destroyed you are at that point in your life where you will come to that god and say god i've tried and failed i want you to help and it he will help that's why he called on the God of Israel and said, oh, let's see how he started his prayer. When somebody says, oh, when you find somebody in the hospital and he says, oh, you find somebody who looks at the board where they are pasted the, uh, you know, the result. And he turns to you and say, how about it? And he says, oh. He gets a letter from, you know, from home, and they say, I learned that you had a letter from home, and he has just opened it, and then he opened it, and he's reading, and say, how about it? And he said, oh, there's something there. I said there's something there. And that's why Jabez said, oh, that, that will bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, that thine hand might be with me, that thou wouldest keep me from evil. Evil surrounds me. That you will keep me from evil. That it may not grieve me. I've lived all my life in grief. And God granted him. That's God. He comes immediately. He's waiting for you to call. And it's the day you call. And the time you call. He says, yes, I've been waiting for you. I'm right here to help you. And the Lord is here tonight. 
and on all those campuses where you are and we're sharing together now the lord is there and the lord is there waiting for you just to call and when you call the lord will turn everything around what was we'll see point number three now he demanded a better stage he demanded a better stage let me leave uh, Jabez, now he's fortunate, now he's blessed. Everything is going on well for him. Now that he's all right, I can go to another man. I come to Joseph. From Jabez to Joseph. And here now I'm talking about say no and reign in life. Hear this, Joseph, he had a dream. And just like every one of us, we have dreams. Sometimes you have the dream in the night. Sometimes you have the dream in the day. Sometimes you have the dream like a painted picture on the canvas. Sometimes you have the dream just in your heart. And you know that you know that you know. You have assurance that this is what God is preparing you for. You cannot even describe and you cannot explain how it was like that. And sometimes the dream, we didn't get it in the church. We didn't get it in a religious meeting. The Lord just put that painting in our heart. And he says, here is a dream. Here is what you are going to be. And then you are thinking, well, I'll just jump. And then I jump over the huddle there. And I'm right there. And sometimes it doesn't happen exactly like that. It was like that for Joseph. He had a great dream. And he was so excited about it. And when he woke up, he said, my brother, here's something. I'm going to make it in life. See the dream I had. And that created problem for him. You know, some of the problems we have, they come from the people we least expected will be jealous of us. We thought they'll be happy. Your junior brother is going to make it in life. Your relative has a big dream and something great is going to happen and he's so excited and he comes to tell you and you think they'll say, praise the Lord, my brother is going to succeed in life. Jealousy came and he went into real, real problem. Please wait. The way up is down. It's the paradox of life. The oppressed are the people that are going to have dominion. The people that suffer, they are the people that are going to enjoy. The people that cry today are the people that are going to laugh. The people that you keep down and you keep in a cage, they are the people that are going to fly out like an eagle and they are going to soar to a great height. And if you are there at this time in the dungeon, in the bottom, begin to rejoice because that is an indication. The way up is down. The very fact that I see you down down there today gives me signification, identification that you are a man for the top. And you are going to get to the top because I have seen people like you. I've seen people like you when they had a dream that they're going up. And the first step is that they go down. And when they go down, then they come up. And you're going to come up. But you know, there was a challenge for this Joseph. I'm reading to you from Genesis chapter 39. Chapter 39, I'm reading from verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused. He said, No. He refused. And said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master knows not what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee, but you. Because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against my God? And it came to pass as she spoke to Joseph day after day, day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass to about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by the, by the garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand, and he fled and got him out. 
<laughs> Look up here. Uh, that's somebody that learned how to say no. If you want God to be a partner in progress to you, you must learn to say no. If you want God to get involved in your life and fulfill the dream that he has placed and planted and painted in your heart, you must learn to say no. Look at this. This Joseph, he knew that he was destined for the throne. He didn't know how it will be. He didn't know when he will be. But he knew, before I die, I will get to the top. The names of who is who in this country, my name will be there. And because of the future that I'm looking at, I'm not going to allow anything now today, the present kind of problem, to destroy the future exaltation. That's why he learned to say no. And when he came to Egypt, when he came to that country, he actually met a lot of things. I've read about the history of Joseph, and I'll just summarize everything for you. The things he had to say no to. Number one, you see that already. He said no to immorality. No to immorality. Uh, you know the situation here now. Uh, you know, in, we, know, we know of men that will be running after women. That one is a common thing. In this case now, it's the woman running after the boy. And we know of boys that normally run after girls, after ladies, but sometimes it, it looks like everything is changing. And it is now the uh, ladies running after the boy. And we know of boys raping ladies. But now, hmm. Things are changing. Now, ladies raping boys. And this is the situation here. And Joseph said, I'm telling you, lady, I'm telling you, woman, I know how to say no. He said no to immorality. And that's the challenge I bring to you. That as you know, that you're not a mediocre. And God is helping you and God is leading you to travel and go to the top never mind your present situation don't say because I'm in the dungeon because I am a slave because I am poor because I'm not doing well because of my present situation well let me just let go and let what will be be and nobody loves me nobody cares for me and this lady is the only one that is showing interest in me. So, what's my problem? Let me just leave, leave myself and let go. No! Because of the future. And because the Lord is helping you. And the Lord is preparing you for something up there. You say no to, number one, immorality. Number two, no to indecency indecency you know uh, there are when you look at the indecent dressing indecent appearance indecent comportment of young people today and you say since everybody is doing it why don't i do it ah look up here i've been to some countries uh, where some of the people there eat things that i wonder ah, do they eat something like this if uh, you see that your neighbors, if it becomes the fashion, that they're eating lizard, will you say, everybody is doing it. Everybody is eating lizard. And so, and this, this one, there's not enough money. And there's a lot of lizards that are, you know, just, they are carelessly roaming about. Why don't I catch some of them? After all, some people are eating it. I will eat it too. No, that's not diet for you. You make up your mind. They may be eating it and they may be doing it. I am going to be different. I said I'm going to be different. And you will be different in Jesus' name. Because you say no. Number one, to immorality. Number two, to indecency. Number three, to immodesty. Ask yourself, is this modest? Does this befit somebody that is destined for the throne? Somebody that is going to reign. I can imagine when eventually Joseph began to reign. And he was up there on the throne. And then he saw Potiphar and Potiphar's wife. I think he, he felt proud of himself. 
it was good I said no to that woman. I would have lost my self-respect. And she would have looked at me and said, this fellow that does not have self-discipline and could not contain himself, could not hold himself. I would want to tell me. Now you say that you are this, this, you are a man in authority. Do you remember I, I conquered you. You were not able to hold yourself. But this young man, because he said no to immorality, and no to indecency, and no to immod immodesty, then he was able to actually look up with a shoulder squared, saying, woman, you remember? Do you know why I said no to you? See me now where I am. And I guess the woman will just kneel down and say, you have conquered. And you will conquer. Yeah. You will conquer. Yeah. Don't mind what is happening today, but you will make it. Yeah. Number four, no to infidelity. Infidelity. You know, this young man could have become almost like an atheist. Could have said, uh -uh, I was worshipping God. And when things were bad, I'll report back to my father. And eventually, even the dream I had, I told my brothers and see where it has landed me. And he, be, he might have begun to say, why live a righteous life? Why live an upright life? Why do well? Because the more you do well, the more negative things happen to you. But he avoided that. He avoided that. He said no to infidelity. And then number five, no to intimidation. You know that woman, the wife of Potiphar, saying, come and commit sin. And Joseph was saying, no. Maybe the woman will say, uh, you know what I can do? If I talk to my husband, your master, and I tell a big lie on you, where you will land, you will never forget in your life. And David said, that's intimidation. That's the name of the game. When they want to catch you, and they want to put you in their box, and they, want you, and they want to make you their slave. And they want you to just be a yes boy. A yes lady. That anything they say, anything they want, you are just their slave. You are a tool, an instrument for them to use. When they want the pleasures of the flesh, you are just like a tool for them. And they want to intimidate you to surrender yourself. And surrender your life. But you say no to intimidation. That I know where I'm going. I know where I'm coming from. And I know where I'm destined to be. Because of that, I say no to intimidation. And you know this uh, young man, he was a hard-working young man. And I'm thinking about it now, Joseph. Nobody to say, this is the time to wake up. And this is the time to sleep. And he was always doing something. And you know, as you are here on the campus and you're supposed to go for lectures, if you are not very careful, because there's nobody to say, oh, it's time. They're not ringing the bell like they used to do in the primary school or in some of the junior secondary school from one class to the other. They ring the bell and say, next class, next class. Nobody does that here. And even though they tell us that, uh, you know, the coursework is very important, how you come to lectures, that's very important. You say, who cares? Who cares? I'm supposed to spend uh, four years here, and if I spend five and, or six, I'm still young. If I have carryover, who cares? You know, you just live a carefree life like that. But you know, Joseph, number six, he said no to idleness. That man was active, active. He said no to idleness. I'm not going to be idle. I'm not going to be indolent. And then in Egypt, actually, Egypt was a land known for idolatry. But as Joseph got there, he looked around. And he saw the idolatry around. And he said, there is something they are not going to bend my knee for in this land of Egypt. And no matter what they say. And they may show it on their newsletter or billboard or whatever. At that time, they didn't have television. Today, they might show it over the television and they demonstrate it. You know, you open the uh, internet like this, the first thing that comes up is that idolatry. You say, they are not going to get me by this thing. And this young man said no to idolatry. The idolatry that he made, that he saw in Egypt, he said no. And I'm telling you, if you're going to be a man destined to reign, destined for the throne, and you're going to reign in life, there is something you need to have, the ability and the power to say no. 
Follow me again. Number one, note to immorality. Number two, note to indecency. Number three, note to immodesty. Number four, note to infidelity. Number five, note to intimidation. Number six, note to idleness. Number seven, no to idolatry. I come to number three, the third person, Jesus. Now, uh, let me tell you something here now. Jabez changed his destiny by prayer. But Jabez could change his destiny. Jabez cannot change my destiny. Everything that Jabez had, all I can have from Jabez is a good example. Now, in the case of Joseph, he too, he got to the throne. And I can learn from him. I can see his good example, but Joseph cannot touch my life, transform me, change everything, and make me who he was. That's the difference between Jabez and Jesus. That's the difference between Joseph and Jesus. Jesus did not only say no. He has the ability to give me the power to say no. And that's why I come to him. I say I'm helpless. And I see that although I'm challenged by the example of Jabez, and I'm encouraged by the example of Joseph, but I am so excited about the example of Jesus Christ because he has the power to give me the ability and the strength and the power to say no. As you look at uh, the life of Jesus, I'm reading from Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew chapter 4, reading about this Jesus, he had what is called temptation. That is an invitation, an enticement to do what was wrong, to say what was wrong, to act in a way that was wrong. And then he manifested the ability and the strength and the power to say no. In verse 3, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into an holy city, into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thou, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. I like that last sentence. Hey, look up here. Hey, the way I understand it is this. The angels, they were standby. They were waiting and watching. They came with help. They came with support from heaven. And, but they were waiting. They wanted the devil to finish his work before they came in. And also, they wanted to see what Jesus will do. Do you know, the help of God is waiting just there. But waiting to see whether you will say yes or no to the tempter, to evil. And while the angels are waiting, while the blessing of God is waiting, it's like it comes from this direction. You say no. And the angels mark it. Looks like this man needs a blessing. And then another one comes and then you say no. And then the angels mark it. And then the another one comes and I said, tell me out loud. I said no. And then when the tempter gets tired, because you will not be tired. The tempter will get tired. The evil people will get tired. But the good people of God here tonight, you will not be tired in Jesus' name. 
when the devil gets tired and then he leaves low and behold see the angels of god readily waiting for you and they're going to bring help to you you see satan he was the highest of the angels of god but he fell he fell from the highest position to the lowest position and then he became envious and jealous of jesus who was still keeping his own position as the only begotten son of god and he said i am down why should he be up because the name of jesus has been exalted above every name that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that jesus is lord if I am down, why is he up? I'll bring him down. That's why he came. Do you know that all those people, agents of Satan that come to you and they are tempting you, do this, do this, do this, because they see, I don't know whether they see or not, but I see that your star is bright. And because of their jealousy and their envy, they want to bring you down. You will say no. From Jesus, we should learn, number one, to say no to Satan. No to Satan. Number two, no to seducers. Uh, there are people that want to seduce. They want to entice. They want to deceive. And they want to lure you into something evil. And they might use anything, whatever it is they use. You want to say no to seducers. Number three, you say no to sensuality. The things of the flesh. You see, the people that want to bring you down, they use things of the flesh a lot. Things of the flesh a lot. And whatever the picture is, what if, whether it is motion picture or still picture or just their literal natural self that they are using. Sensuality. But you say no. Number four, you say no to sodomites. You see, there are those, uh, you don't have, um, you don't have uh, accommodation for yourself. You want to squat, and you're a boy. And then you find another boy, and he says, you're looking for a place to come with me. And, you know, there's a place with me. And there's so many beds do you have there, just one. We're not boys together. There's no problem at all. And you think there is no problem. And then you, you know, you're so tired. You came from lectures and from, you know, the tutorial and all that. And then as you're sleeping in the night, you, you're feeling, you see if somebody is fumbling with your body. And then you wake up, and then you look at uh, you know your roommate and and then he's smiling you say what are you smiling about what's the point what's the matter with you he says I, I don't you understand i don't understand do you understand that kind of thing do you want to understand that kind of thing do you want to accept that kind of thing you say no to sodomites and then if you're a lady and then there's another lady and he wants to fumble with your body no to lesbianism you say because i know i am destined for the throne i don't want the people that are down to pull me down with them because i am up and i will not come down then you say no number five to sorcery sorcery you see witchcraft evil power occultism say no to sorcery and you say no to social vices the social vices all the things around us that all the people are practicing i say no to them and i say no to spiritism not spirituality that's a good thing spiritism this thing that they do in the secret spiritism i say no to it and i say no to scorners you know the scorners I came to your room and uh, around uh, 7 o'clock uh, that uh, Tuesday night and it was on the, you know, on the 9th of uh, March and I didn't see you and I asked the people around, they said you went to act uh, right or whatever, what act up, act down, act right, what did they call it? And then you say, no, why are you talking like that? And then he begins to laugh, so you become religious 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 person ah mother of jesus father of jesus you've joined them where is your big bible you didn't carry it on your head as they do you are not religious enough yet scorners you say no to them i say no to scorners i said i say no. to who to the scorners because i'm going to do well and I'm not going to allow these corners, I'm not going to allow them to disturb my progress because I am going to make it. I said we're going to make it. That's why we say no to every one of them. As I round up and finish, I have 
just three things I want to leave with you. Number one, our confession. Number two, our conviction. Number three, our confidence. Number one, our confession. Number two, our conviction. Number three, our confidence. What's number one? Our confession. What's our confession? Look at this. It's a pitiable situation, but it's real. That's the, that's the truth of the matter. And I read it to you from Romans chapter 7, and it's from verse 15. That which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. What I hate, that I do. That's our confession. I want to do right. But I don't have the power. I've been listening to all this thing from beginning to this point. And I agree. I'm following you, preacher. I am with you. I just want to be able to say no. Like Jabez. Like Joseph. Like Jesus. I want to be able to say no. But I don't have the power. I make the confession. I do not have the power. For that which I do, I allow not. But what I would, that I do not. It is what I hate that I do. If that is our confession, what is our conviction? Our conviction you will find in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Our conviction is that God has all power. Our confession, I don't have power to say no. I don't have power to stand. But my conviction is God has all power. My confidence. What's our confidence? In Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading to you from verse 13. Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's my confidence. My confession in myself, I am powerless. In myself, I cannot make it. In myself, I do not have the ability. I do not have the power to say no to all this barrage of problems and temptations coming at me. I do not have the power. That's my confession. My conviction, God has all the power. My confidence, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's why I invite you to that Christ tonight. And you will make it as you come to Christ. The power to say no. The strength to say no. And to be able to live and your head will be above the waters. And you will not sink. And you will not be drowned in the sea of evil all around you. And you will make it in Jesus' name. Because, because you can do and you will do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Why don't you rise up? This is a solemn moment now. You go from the confession to the conviction to the confidence. We're going to pray together. Jabez prayed unto God. And then the Lord changed everything around. Do you believe God is mighty and powerful? Is that your conviction? That God has all power. You want to close your eyes as we pray. If you are with me in this uh, thing that we have heard, and you have the confidence now that the Lord can make the necessary change in your life through Christ who strengthens you. I'm going to pray with you. And this is going to be a turning point in your life. Things are going to change. All you will do is just raise up your hand to indicate you want me to pray along with you. You have the confidence. God bless you. This is good. Just raise up your hand. Thank you very much. God bless you. Boys, this is good. And girls, this is wonderful. Just raise up your hand. Raise it up very well. There's nothing to be ashamed of. As you are raising up your hand, I believe you are with me. Your confidence is in the Lord. That he, through him, you'll be able to do all things. In all the other locations where we are, on our campuses, as you are listening now, and you are there, you raise up your hand. And then when we finish, 
the, our leaders there will help those who have raised up their hands so that they'll be able to know the way up. And the Lord Jesus Christ, with his grace and power, will help everyone. You are raising up your hand, raise it up very well. Thank you very much. I'm going to do something because I, I need to see you. And this is a large crowd. As I raise up your hand, just, just, just follow me because uh, I'm getting you to a decision that will totally turn your life around. Take whatever you have. Don't leave anything behind. And just come in front here. I'll make space for you here. Thank you. Those who are raising up their hands, come over here. We're going to handle this problem together. Because your destiny is going to change for the better. God is going to work out the miracle in your life. Thank you, my dear sisters. There, just come up here. Just come up here. Thank you, my brothers, my daughters, my sons. Just come up here. Come up here. Come up here. God bless you. God bless you real good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You and Jesus will make a change. And you and the Lord will turn everything around. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. God bless you. Keep on coming. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God is waiting for you here. You're taking a decision, a decision of your life. Because when Christ comes to you, and then he is enthroned in your heart, in your life, the power, the ability to say no to what is wrong, and to say yes to the Lord, and say yes to what is wrong. Keep on coming. God bless you. Thank you very much. You are outside. Please uh, find a way to come in. And let's make way for them out uh, over there. Thank you. Keep on coming. God bless you. Thank you. You are taking a decision today that will totally turn your life around. Thank you. We are waiting for you. And you are precious in the sight of the Lord. Significant and dear to the Lord. As we come to the frontier, let's close our eyes. We're going to pray together. Let's close our eyes. You're taking this decision as an adult. You know what you're doing. You know in yourself you cannot make it. That's our confession. But our conviction is God has all power. Father, in the name of Jesus... I pray for everyone that has come out. I pray that you turn their lives around. Amen. Forgive their sins. Change everything in them. Amen. To now begin to climb up. That they will succeed in life in Jesus' name. Amen. Give them the very life of Christ. Amen. Save them, O oh Lord. Forgive their sins. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody now we're going to pray. If you have any sickness, the Lord is going to touch you and heal you. Let's just raise up our hands to the Lord. Everybody out there in here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring all these, my brothers and sisters, before you. And I'm praying, O oh Lord, that you will touch their sick bodies. Heal them in Jesus' name. I pray that you work the miracle right now. Deliver them from every evil. Confirm the miracle in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Put down your hands.